Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a Games Over Lunch. Games Over Lunch is a small initiative where you will be able to build a game within 30 minutes or on a lunch break. These videos are cut down and the basics have been pretty much removed. But let's get the first one started by rolling the introduction. Now to get things started, I've already gone ahead and I've set up the first room so that the game itself is 512 pixels wide and 256 high. I've also increased the viewport so it will be double our resolution when we play the game. I've already imported my amazing hand-drawn art assets and you can download them in the description below. And I've also created the default objects that I'm going to need and each object is blank. So let's start by working with the player first. I'm going to go ahead and open all of the events and then maximize my window. The first thing I'm going to need is create some variables for user input. So this is going to be our keyboard keys. And then after that, we need a couple variables for acceleration, deceleration, speed, and then a variable to hold on to how fast we are moving. Finally, after that, we need a variable to tell us which direction we are facing. And then we want to set our image speed to zero because we're going to control that as we move. Because we're using a random function here, let's go to the top and add randomize in so that we have a different option every single time we run the game. Now we'll switch over to the step event and let's actually start making some of the regular movement code that we use as a platformer. So first we need to check for horizontal input using the keyboard right and keyboard left. The next thing we need to do is we need to check whether or not we are pressing a key. If we are pressing a key, then we'll come into the if statement and we are going to add that movement onto our horizontal movement based off the acceleration. I want to make sure we clamp that value so we can't go at an extremely fast speed. And whenever we are pressing left or right, that's when we want to change the facing direction to either negative one or one, which will be our horizontal input. Now, if we aren't pressing any keys, well, we're just going to slow down our player and finally in the very end once we've reached the maximum of zero we'll make sure our horizontal movement is actually zero the only difference that we're going to do is we are going to stop our image frame or subframe at the first frame so where it looks like we're standing on the ground and then finally we'll add the horizontal movement onto our x position now before we actually use this horizontal movement and add it to our x position we don't want our player to be able to go off the left of the screen or the right of the screen so we'll do a quick check to say if the X position plus horizontal movement is going to be less or equal to the, uh, the sprite width divided in half, then we're just going to minimize that horizontal movement and set it to zero. And we have to do it for the right side. So we'll check to make sure that the horizontal movement plus our X position is if it's bigger or equal to the room width minus half our sprite, then we'll set our horizontal movement to zero. And this will stop us from going over to the left or over to the right. The final thing I want to do is I want to set our image speed to a percentage of how fast we are moving. So we can do this by using the image speed divided by, sorry, the horizontal movement divided by the maximum speed, which will give us a value between zero and one. So that will give us the actual image speed that we're moving. To finish off our player, let's go to the draw event. And instead of actually drawing the player itself, let's use a draw sprite extended. We need to draw the current sprite that we are using and then the current subframe that we are at the X and Y position, and then instead of using the image X scale and Y scale for the image X scale, let's use our facing direction. We can go ahead and use the image Y scale because we're not playing with that one. And then we need a rotation of zero degrees. Our C color is gonna be white and our alpha is gonna be one. Now we can save our player and let's actually open up the acorn and that's gonna be the next one we work on. Again, I'll open up all the different steps and then I'll maximize the window. In the create event, we need to make sure that we randomize everything. We're going to set a gravity variable to something very low, and then we're going to set a rotation speed in between negative two and two. In the step event, we want to apply that image rotation to our image angle, and then we want to apply the Y position to the gravity so it moves our acorn down the screen. If our acorn passes the bottom of our screen or window, then what we want to do is add one to the score and get rid of that acorn. So we can use an if statement to say, is the Y position bigger than the room height plus 32 for a little bit of padding? If it is, then we'll use the score variable, which is actually like a global variable in this case. We'll add one to the score variable, and then we'll just remove the instance of that acorn itself. 
Now doing it this way will work fine in an exe. I know for a fact if we're using HTML5, we're gonna repurpose this object. However, that would be a totally different subject. So we're not gonna worry about it right now. So this is gonna work in the case of a Windows executable. Final event we have is an acorn is colliding with the player. If an acorn is colliding with the player, then it's basically game over. What we wanna do is we want to remove any acorns that we're gonna be using, as well as any generators. You can see here we have an object generated acorn. So let's make sure that we remove that acorn generator from our scene. Then we need to remove any player instances that we have. And then we will remove any acorns that are currently falling on the screen. And then what we need to do is we need to tell our game it's actually a game over. We will be using the object GUI to do this. So we will just change the object GUI to say that it is game over. We can get away with this because I know for a fact that there's only one object GUI in our game, and that's just because of how we've programmed it. Let's save our acorn, close everything, and load up our object generator. In here, we'll open the two different events, and then we'll maximize our window. In the create event, we wanna make sure that we randomize everything, and then we'll be using a couple variables to help us spawn the acorns randomly in our game. So we'll use a spawn rate, which is the room speed times 0 0.075. We'll use a multiplier, which will tell us how many acorns to spawn. And then we're gonna set alarm zero to be that spawn rate. In the alarm zero, we need to figure out how many acorns we're going to spawn. So we're gonna floor the score divided by 10. So every 10 acorns, we're gonna go up a level. And then because flooring will always round down, we're gonna add one to it in case we have a zero multiplier here. Next, let's use some placeholder variables for our X and Y locations. And then what we wanna do is just repeat however number of times our multiplier is set at. We'll choose a random X position and Y position in our room. And then we'll just instantiate an object acorn at the same depth of our generator. Our generator is gonna live on the same layer so we can get away with using it this way and at the same depth. The final thing we wanna do is reset the alarm. So we'll use an alarm set zero, which is our current alarm, and we'll, we'll reset it to the spawn rate. So now we're done with our object generator. Let's close this and let's load up the object GUI. Once again, let's open up all our events and then maximize that window. We need a variable to keep track of whether our game is over. So we'll declare that in our create event. And this is the variable that we're gonna be changing whenever our acorn hits our player. In the draw GUI event, let's set up our vertical and horizontal alignment to make sure that it's gonna be centered in the screen. In order to draw our score, we don't have to do this, but just to make it easier, I'm gonna be storing all of this inside a string so that I can use it wherever I need to without having to rewrite it. Next, I actually want to draw the text score. So I'll be using just a random draw text. We wanna make sure that we draw at the room width. We're using the Y location of 10, and then we're going to draw at the text score. This is gonna draw in the middle top of our room because room width is from zero to whatever our room is, and then the Y position will be 10. And because of our horizontal and vertical alignment, it's gonna draw in the center. Now in our draw event, we need to check to see if it's game over. So we'll do that with a simple if statement saying if game over equals true, then we are going to draw the game over text on our screen. We're going to draw a little bit bigger. So in this case, we're going to have to use draw text extended transformed. We're going to draw the room width and then the Y position is going to be the room height minus 96 to kind of put it in the middle. We're going to draw the word game over. We want a separation of zero. So this is the line height. We don't really care about this. The room width we're gonna, sorry, the width we're gonna use as the room width because we don't want it to wrap. We're gonna use the X and Y scale as four to make it a little bit bigger. And then we don't want any angle. And then we'll end it off with the final bracket of our draw statement. We're gonna tell the player that they can restart the game by pressing the R key. So in this case, we'll just use a simple draw text because we don't need it any bigger. We're gonna draw the room width and then the room height to make it exactly in the middle. And then we're just gonna say, press the R key to restart. And that means that we need to come into the step event and listen for that R key. I only want it to happen if the game is over and if the keyboard or sorry, the player has pressed the R key on the keyboard, then we want to reset our score to zero. And in this case, we are okay to use game restart. All right, so let's save this object and close it. And let's open up our room, which is room one. And you can see that I have the ground, fences, acorns, player and GUI. On the ground, we'll add our ground sprite, and I can add this and just drag it out because I don't have any detail in the actual game, so I'm not dragging anything out that will pixelate it. 
on the fences, I can just drag these assets out and I can turn them, just kind of make them into hopefully what would look like a nice scene. On the acorns, what I want to do is I'm going to drag in my acorn generator at the top, the player, I'll come down and I will drag in my player. I'll put them right here in the middle. And then for the GUI, I'm just going to drag my object GUI in the top as well. So if I hit a five, if we haven't made any errors, we should be able to run left and right. And we should see some acorns starting to appear. So I had a little bit of an error where my acorns, they are actually appearing, but let's go to our object acorn. Let's go to our gravity and let's make this a little bit bigger. So our gravity is 0.3. Now, when we run our game, hopefully that will make the acorns appear. You can see that they are moving nice and slow. And one of the things that I, we actually should do here is if we go to our acorns, I know this is a little off script, but what I want to do is instead of adding just to the Y position, I'm going to accumulate the gravity and then add it to the Y position. That means that we're going to be using a vertical movement variable and we'll set it to zero. And then in the step event, we'll say vertical movement plus equals our gravity and then the Y position is just gonna be plus equal vertical movement. Now, if I run my game again, this vertical movement is going to pile up and you can see that the acorns are falling quite a bit faster now. And if I try to go over to the left, my duck gets stuck. If I go over to the right, he gets stuck as well. And once we've passed that 10, you can see that there's two acorns and the game will just continuously get harder. So every time you go past 10, so 30, 40, 50, we're going to have more acorns on the screen. And this is why if we are using HTML5, we would want to reuse these objects instead of destroying them and recreating new ones. Anyway, I hope you have learned a thing or two. And that is it for the first episode of Games Over Lunch. Thank you very much. A special thank you to everyone who's decided to support this channel through Patreon and a special shout out to the following users in no particular order. Annie, Paul, Andrea, Bill, Ashby, Edward, Ian, Darth Wolf, Jujube84, Victor, and Robert. Thank you everyone once again, and please remember to check out the description below for any links that I've mentioned in the video, and also the new Discord server.